Corporation, which is going to be ABL Corporation, and you're going to say hello, hi. Hello. It's nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Uh, how are you doing today? Very good. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank much. you so much. So, could you please explain ABL Company to our viewers over there? Sure. And we would like to hear a brief introduction about your company. Okay, so our company, we are since uh, more than 75 years working in mobility and uh, power train solutions. Yeah. And since more than 20 years, we are in the fuel cell area also. And what we try to do is really as a research company, as a private and independent research company, to improve the technology and to help OEMs or tier companies as a partner to improve their fuel cells, their technology, their electrolyzers. Yeah, so, so basically, uh, sorry, the company is, uh, where is the headquarter of the company? Our headquarter is in Austria, so we are, in Austria, we are based in Austria. But actually, we are a global company now. We are located in 26 different countries yeah. all over the world, and we are around 11,000 people okay, globally. I see. Uh, so, is there any kind of device or product that you would like to show us yes. today? Yes, I thought I thought I'd give you a very quick brief overview how we using yeah, our sure. tools, and then afterwards, my Korean colleagues even can give you a little bit more details. Yeah, that would so be great. We always start with simulation normally. Yeah. yeah. So before we try to produce any prototype, we go to the simulation. We verifying in the simulation about the component, about the part, are they good, are they not good. Yeah. And then afterwards, when we're quite certain with the simulation and the results giving us a positive result, then we go to prototype building. And if you look around the corner... Yes, let's get along this way. Then we start with our prototype building. For example, here we have a prototype, then this is only a model, but we create yeah. a complete fuel cell as a, as a prototype and we're testing it, we're verifying it, and then we plan this one into the complete vehicle. So this one we have it one-to-one, -one, of course, in Austria, a real truck available. Okay. And there we're combining battery, we're combining the fuel cell, we're combining the e-motor, and then we're testing on the road. We have an own test track how these uh, thermal efficiency topics are working out for us. Okay, so basically this one over here got inserted into this right. side. Okay. This one uh, is a passenger car, actually this one over there is for a truck. They look slightly different, yeah. But yeah. in the essence, yes. And then when we create our prototypes, then comes the point of testing them. So, and for testing, we need different testing equipment. So, either a testing solution for the complete fuel cell or, for example, only for the cell inside the fuel cell or the stack. And then here is, for example, a consumption unit. And then over there, we have the possibility to also do the diagnostics for the electronic signals inside the system. And here you can see on this one, okay, over when here. we put a so-called fuel cell as a balance of plants mm -hmm. into, the, into the test bed. And we're emulating this equipment around this one more or less uh, like if you would drive on the road with this fuel cell. So yeah. in a nutshell, this is what happens. And then these days there is one new trend coming up. Yeah. You know, the internal combustion engine using fossil fuel is going, getting more and more outdated. Mm -hmm. But companies try to use the technology and inject hydrogen instead. Mm -hmm. And for this one, then you need to more or less use equipment like this to verify if there's some hydrogen coming out in the exhaust or not. Yeah. And uh, basically this H2IC is also one of the new trends coming up. Oh, is this the one that you're currently talking about? Yes, for oh, example, this, this one. Device. This one okay. testing more or less if there's some residual hydrogen coming uh -huh. out of the of the exhaust gas, for so example. So it basically then, yeah. checks out the leakage of the device, right? Yes, uh, you, you, com okay. you do the combustion of the hydrogen yeah, in the I cylinder see. in the chamber and then, of course, through yeah. the exhaust gas, maybe some molecules of hydrogen will escape and we try to find how many are escaping of this one. Okay, because so if you go over a certain concentration, it could be explosive gas. That's yeah, why. Yeah, I see. This is quite interesting and yes. exciting. Is there anything else you would like to introduce to us? Any solution and any kind of innovation that you have accomplished over the years? Over the years, the innovation, I think one of the innovations you see over there right now on the slide there is uh, we created our own so-called Gen Zero stack, mm -hmm. which I said we started from a simulation point of view. And with this Gen Zero stack, we are already capable to do minus 30 cold start. Mm -hmm. So we were looking really on the typical application for vehicles to verify are they, are they good for this one. We're working in a, in a very big project for the marine area. Yeah. So you can see here on our picture up there, we try really to, to use the, the transport sector completely. We also in Germany working with the uh, European government on a project and the German agency for aviation uh, to bring fuel cell into the airplane for 50, 60 people. So is there any other sector that you are specifically uh, operating your system on? No, we only create the prototypes and then we try to find customers mm -hmm. working to us together yeah, uh, to really bring ahead their technology. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, that's quite interesting. And I would like to know how do you feel uh, about like uh, participating in this H2Me 2022? And is this your first time uh, in this exhibition? No, no, it's not the first time. I think we are now here for the third time already at the H2. Uh, it was H2 Mobility last year. Yeah. This year it's H2Me. 
And um, I have to say, I, I find it really impressive. I mean, it, it seems to be growing, the community is growing. Hydrogen seems to get more and more on the map. And I think this is extremely important that Hydrogen is coming as an alternative energy carrier to get more mainstream. I think we need this one to be really uh, from the cost side for the vehicles on a competitive range versus the battery, for example or versus the, the combustion vehicles, which still too many sold on the, on the street these days. Yeah, for sure, Ray. I would like to thank you a lot for this great explanation, and I would like to uh, wish you luck on uh, the upcoming years to come, and we'd like to thank you for your time. I hope you have a great day uh, today and tomorrow. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Have a much. good day. Thank you. you. Okay. So.